I'm Peter Shaw. I'm a data scientist in the Data Science Group. And I'll be talking about a couple um, geo-analytics um, applications, uh, downloadable examples on the, on the wiki site, as well as the um, updated um, page on the wiki that talks about geo-analytics. So here's, here's our TIPCO community site, <clears throat> as David just showed. Um, if I first navigate to the wiki, I'll, I'll show you the, the updated verse, um, page on the wiki. So here's the wiki site. Go down to the Spotfire section of that. And inside the core capabilities here, the, the one I'm mapping is what I'm going to basically navigate to now. So this is the page that has been updated, um, a few more sections added to it. There's a table of contents here. It basically, it starts with some of the um, um, starting the, the sort of core skills, the core, core tools of um, how to use maps, how to put layers on and so forth. There's the next steps of um, visualizations of, um, you know, to talk, there's some recordings of um, past presentations and so forth, and it goes on to the uh, the, the geoanalytics, which is a cloud-based um, tool to do a geocoding and routing and so forth, and it um, talks about additional tools here. There is a uh, scrolling um, kind of a slideshow, talks about each of the different um, sort of number of examples here. If you click on this thing, it actually takes you to a gallery itself, which um, in turn links to relevant assets. So if you see a example that you like, like this WMS or TMS thing to show uh, topography and some weather, you click on that. So any of these things are actually clickable links. Um, actually, many of them, are, yeah, are clickable links. So it takes you to that asset. So to go back to the um, this locations analytics website, um, the wiki page. Again, the, um, the beginning section here talks about things like how do you add a marker layer, how do you add a feature layer. If you have questions about the TMS or WMS layers, it's all explained here. <clears throat> These link back to the uh, to Spotfire um, help page, actually. There's a series of these quick reference topics which talk about a number of things. These are extremely useful. There's a number of uh, videos on these charts and so forth. Um, and here's the next step. So this section here talks about the types of layers you can add, really goes in all, de all the detail there. Here's the part on the um, web-based part, the, um, the geocoding, if you want to do route calculations and, and so forth, the, the geocoder, the reverse geocoder, batch, all, all this kind of stuff. Uh, these, these are all links uh, to take to each of these topics in, in detail. Um, as far as the more topics goes, this is where we get into some of the um, assets on, on the um, on the gallery. Here's a little um, animation here sh showing how to use some of these things. I'll be actually talking about this in a um, bit more detail shortly, but there's um, a series of these downloadable um, assets you can get to on the on the um, on the community site itself, and I'll, I'll be actually walking through this one right here in, in a moment. So the a couple of new ones are the spatial heat map. Um, for Spotfire as well as the uh, spatial density plot. And uh, this listing right here kind of shows a lot of the different um, geospatial kind of assets we have. So we've had the we've had the map contour plot for a while, the hex spin data function, uh, as well as points and polygons. These more recent two things are um, sort of the kind of updated versions of the map contour plot. So it's the map contour plot as well as um, this sort of a, um, a heat map in the, in the background. So you have the contours you can see here, and you have this uh, colored heat map shows up, shows up as a um, as a layer. You can actually um, color code that. So um, I'll be talking about it in a second. And then there's a few other links here at the bottom for the links to other community articles. All right, so let's actually go to the um, uh, uh, examples you're going to show. I could actually click on this, but I'd rather actually just show you how to navigate there directly. So here's our community site again. Um, I was just on the wiki page just then. I'm actually going to go over to the exchange now, which is the downloadable assets. So if you go to exchange, focus in on the um, <coughs> Spotfire part. Again, this is exactly what David just showed. So here's David's autoencoder, and here are these two uh, these two new assets, along with all the other goodies we have on the on the site here. So if I click on the the spatial heat map fun data function, <clears throat> what we have is basically um, it's a 
the a zip file which contains both the data function itself and a example DXP file. Now to get to the actual download, <clears throat> you need to go to this releases um, link right there. So if I click on the releases, it takes me to an area where I can download this zip file. So that's the that's to actually get the zip file. Um, after you open this up, you're just going to jump right there. You get um, so here's an example of the DXP file, which shows the um, you know the the data function embedded in there and shows how it's actually hooked up and everything. So if you want to study that, you can study how it's hooked up. There's a bit more information about where the data comes from. This is actually uh, NOAA data. This, this data says is NOAA data showing a, a snowfall event in March. Um, I think it was called uh, Stella. Winter storm in Stella that dumped a huge amount of snow back in March on the East Coast. Um, let me just talk about the other one as well. So there's two in play here. So there's the heat map, and the other one is the density plot. So density plot is where the actual locations themselves of the things of the of the points are important. So for example, in the city map, you might have a listing of you know traffic accidents. So the locations are important of the traffic accidents. This one in particular just shows population centers of the U.S. So it kind of shows where the populations are. Um, and the, uh, you know, so if you have a map of the city, <clears throat> you might have a heat map of the locations of the traffic accidents. That might tell you where the busy intersections are, or it might tell you where the m most dangerous ones are. Clearly, so the other one, the um, that was the density plot, the heat map. This actually shows um, the the uh, the measured variable. And I think to best illustrate that, I'm actually going to show you a um, a live example. So here's my live example. Here's the actual underlying data from NOAA. <clears throat> These are actually observation stations. We have a latitude, longitude, and this value here is the value of the snowfall in a certain one or two day period back in March when that stellar storm swept through. These NOAA data have a lot more information, you know, the humidity, wind speed, but it's kind of filtered down just to the snow for that period. Now, to put this on a map, um, it goes to map visualization, and it'll um, discover latitude and longitude and make a nice map of, um, of locations. And it's also put a um, sizing by the value, the value being the snowfall. I can also color by the value to kind of show you a bit more um, where the patterns are. So here's the underlying raw data that went behind that um, um, example on the on the downloadable site. So you can see the larger blue areas there are where the snow is falling. Um, again, the density plot isn't really applicable here. The, the, the points are at the locations of the weather station. So it's um, interesting, there's some cluster here by the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado and Boulder, Denver area. There's some clusters here, but the actual thing we're, we care about, perhaps in this case, is the um, in this case is snowfall. All right, so let's. Um, and the thing is, the if you look at the individual points, the fact that they're individual points kind of masks the overall pattern. So you're trying to generalize this observation to look for the overall pattern, um, irrespective of where the actual literal points are. So you, we want to apply the smoothing and get a heat map of the of the patterns here. So I'm going to go through all the steps here. Um, I've I've downloaded the um, the data function. I've, um, I've had, had that available. So if I go to my insert menu, go to the data function from file. <clears throat> I've actually got both of these here, the density plot and the heat map. So I'm going to choose the heat map um, SFD function, the uh, Spotify function definition file, open this up. And it's asking me for X, Y, and Z. X and Y are just locations, so X I'm going to use the longitude. Y is I'm going to use, use the, um, the latitude. Z is the, um, the third variable to plot as the colors or the, the, uh, the contouring thing. And for this, I'll choose this value, which is that snowfall value. Smoothing scale, um, I'm actually going to create a new document properly, just call it smoothing. Um, <clears throat> make it a real value there, and I'll put in, let's say, 0 0.2 here, just as a smoothing thing. And when I'm done, it'll produce a, uh, three data tables, a heat map, um, contours, and the major contours. And if I just let it do its thing, it's going to um, go in the background, and it's done, although you can't see it because it's just produced some 
uh, tables there. To use these on the map, these are, again, these are produced in the TIPCO R, um, and to put these onto the map, I'm basically going to go to the heat map, and for example, so here's the, um, the heat map part, and I could drop this into the, um, this actually goes right into the, um, this area of the visualization, which allows you to put this uh, geometry in. And initially, it's not very impressive, but if I go into the um, uh, settings here, and I should wrap this up because I'm getting close to my time here. What I can do is I can begin to change the appearance, and let's change the, the border to zero. I can um, make it a little bit more transparent, for example. I can set the coloring to pay attention to the value, and all of a sudden, um, I'm getting a thing which looks a bit more like a heat map, all right? And to, obviously, in a lot of the areas of the U.S., there, there was no snow. This is a snowfall event. So what I'd like to do here as well is go into this level and actually just trim off the areas that have no snow, and that kind of collapses it down. I can also um, turn off this actual observation just to focus on the actual, on the actual heat map here. Uh, to put some contours on, I can just drop, go to this contour um, table and, again, grab this geometry um, component here, drag us into the visualization. Again, this one piece lights up, which is the um, geometry thing, and it knows about the, the contours. I've also, so the, the contour also puts this, this out, outer boundary there, so I can get rid of that by, um, I basically code that as, as empty, so I can just get rid of that by deleting that empty value. The major contours similarly are done by um, dragging these on. These actually, this is sort of like tick marks on a, on a axis, right? So major and minor tick marks. Um, I forgot to turn this off, so do that again. These have fewer values, so what I can do for the major contours is um, if I change the settings here, make the colors, um, you know, black to make a bit more emphasis there, and the appearance, um, the line weight a bit darker there, sort of emphasize that. So here I, here I have the, um, the overall, I basically reproduced the thing apart from the, um, you know, artistic color scheme I used before, but, you know, this is the basic um, uh, color scheme, so the basic uh, heat map there. And I, I can go into my, I put the, the uh, smoothing into a um, document property, but um, in the interest of time, just kind of basically um, not hooked up, but I could, could hook that up. And um, you know, have that um, alive. You know, as I as I refresh the smoothing, it would be a live, um, you know, changing um, visualization here. So, all right. So that's basically the um, the heat map data function. There's a whole, um, you know, I would encourage you to explore this uh, this new web page on the wiki site to look at all the other um, components there. If you ever wanted to learn about some of these features, the WMS or TMS layers, that's a great way to do it.